Hey guys, even here. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is Nick Walker, who got a new sponsor again. Yeah, it feels like he just yesterday started working with Hostile Supplements and now he got a new sponsor already. I know in like last less than a year. I think it's been like maybe nine, ten months. He has been with three different sponsors with uh, Revive, Raw and Revive, and then with Hostel, and now with HD Muscle. If you don't know what uh, HD Muscle is, uh, that's Dorian Hamilton. He's the CEO of this company. Uh, so basically, Nick signed with them. I was curious who he's gonna sign with. From what I heard, not many supplement companies were interested in sponsoring Nick because he's asking for quite a lot of money and he has like very big influence. Uh, he's one of the probably the most popular bodybuilder in the world right now and stuff like that. Like there is a lot of good things about him. But then again, uh, he has a bad rap basically because he doesn't really want to work. And these supplement companies don't really appreciate that. They don't like that very much. They want a hard worker. They don't need somebody who is not going to be willing to work the boots, who is not going to be able to travel around the world when it's necessary, and somebody who's going to be flaky in a way. As you guys saw, he got back to Matt Jansen, so he's coaching him again. And they are friends again, but as you noticed, Matt Jensen didn't sign him back to Raw and Revive. And it happens, you know, sometimes athletes stop working with one sponsor, they go to the next, and then they come back to the previous one. A perfect example would be, most recently, Brandon Curry, who stopped working with SciTech Nutrition and he was working something with Tiger Fitness, he had his own line, this and that, that lasted for a while and then he decided to quit that and to go back to SciTech and now he's with SciTech, so it can happen, it happens, but only if you end things on very good terms and if they were happy with what you were providing to them before. Now, as far as Raw and Revive, I just feel like Matt Jensen didn't think it was the right business decision. And he's not the only owner. I mean, Chris Bumstead is a part owner and there is another co-owner. So these guys probably thought it would be a bad business decision. It's not personal. I'm sure Matt Jensen loves Nick Walker. They are good friends and stuff like that. But it just wouldn't be a wise business decision. So I'm not sure how good of a decision it was for Dorian Hamilton and HD Muscle to sponsor Nick Walker because uh, from what I heard, he was being paid around, I think, between six and eight thousand dollars by Fuad and Hostel Supplements and there were some other perks uh, in that contract like he would get a bonus if he wins a show, stuff like that and he wasn't happy with that. He asked for more, I think he asked for double. I think he's, he, I, I believe he asked for like $15,000 and uh, Fuer just couldn't afford that. He didn't want that. He didn't think he was that valuable. So they just ended the contract right then and there. Now, I don't know how much would he ask of his new sponsor of HD Muscle, but I'm pretty sure it's more than what he had before. I'm pretty sure it's above 10K a month. So, I don't know how big HD Muscle is, they are not a huge supplement company, they are not as big, I don't think they are as big as Raw and Revive, I don't see it, I don't think they are big as, like, for example, I mentioned SciTech, or, for example, Old School Labs, I think they are a smaller company, they are doing well, but I don't think they are that big, and, uh, I don't know, if Nick doesn't really try hard, and promotes the hell out of them, and actually starts working, I mean, traveling, working the boots and stuff like that, unless he does all that, unless he does all the work, I think this contract might end up, might end prematurely. But we'll see, we'll see what happens in the next year or so. Me personally, if I was a betting man, I wouldn't bet that this contract is gonna last longer than a year, but we'll see, maybe he stays with them for like next 10 years. Anyways, the only way to find that out is if we wait and see what happens. So as soon as Nick changes his sponsor again, I will make sure to let you guys know. So subscribe to my channel. I mentioned Chris Bumstead earlier in conversation about the owners, the co-owners of Raw and Revive. And uh, here is a physique update of him, which I'm sure you have seen. It has been circling around on all the social media platforms, I don't know many bodybuilders who haven't posted uh, this photo 
on their stories, on their IG. And when I saw this, I was like, I mean, he looks good. Man. I, I can't say anything bad. Honestly, when I wanted to make this video, I was like, I'm a little bit late. I didn't really do an update, like uh, a news video about this because, you know, it's been posted one day ago. And so I thought maybe if I make sort of a clickbait, if I say in the caption that something is bad about his physique, maybe it's gonna make you guys click on it. It probably would, but honestly, like, I couldn't find any flaws, really. The only thing that I noticed, but it's just his insertions, I mean, is his shoulders, like his front shoulders kind of mashed with his chest, like you can see the rear delts and, and the side delts, but the front delts, some they're like gone. So I think it's just his insertions. I don't think it's any kind of, I don't know, muscle atrophy or injury or anything like that. I think it's just the way his muscle looks. And I don't know, I mean, this pose looks amazing, man. I mean, he looks like a freaking, almost like a freaking open bodybuilder. Maybe a little bit on a smaller side, but still, you know, pretty big. Like, I, I don't feel like Rafael Brandau is that much bigger than Chris Bumstead. I mean, he is, but does he look that much bigger? I don't know. I think Chris would do really well in the open division. So, like, I'm thinking, did he get too big? I mean, the other guys they kind of have maybe a little bit more classical shape. For example, Wesley Wissers. I know this guy probably won't get anywhere close to Chris Bumstead in terms of placing, but you know this is what I'm talking about when I say classic lines. Like, he really has a beautiful, aesthetic-looking classic physique. Here we got a fresh update of Terence Ruff, and it is very recent. And as you can see, he looks amazing. But, you know, what I'm trying to say here, what I'm thinking about is, like, maybe the judges sort of change the direction of classic physique and they stride more towards the more classical golden era type of physiques because these guys that are in the top, they, they, they look more like, you know, smaller open bodybuilders. Like, they're very complete. They have everything. They have, like, the glutes, the lower backs, the density, the thickness in the shoulders, uh, the thickness, like, from the chest to back. And it's all very, very impressive, for sure. Like, they're very conditioned. Uh, they are, like, they have the maturity. They have everything that bodybuilders have, but they have a weight cap. And, uh, yeah, they have small waist. They have good symmetry and proportions and stuff like that. But do they necessarily have golden arrow lines? Take a look at Terence right here. I mean, look at the back, look at the glutes and the hamstrings. Like, he has a ton of muscle. He could do it at 212 and be very competitive, as it was proven before by some of the other top uh, classic VZ guys, like George Peterson, for example. I think he was third in 212, and he was, like, third in, in, in classic physique. So, you know, there is a thin line, really, between bodybuilding and classic physique, it's simply the weight cap, as it seems. Maybe a little bit different posing. Maybe an accent is more on that posing. At, of course, different trunks and different uh, poses we have in classic physique. But really, it's not what we all probably expected this division would be. You know, golden era type of physiques. We don't really see that very often. So, back to Chris Bumstead. Like, I know he looks amazing. Like, he looks really, really impressive. He has all that thickness. He has all that muscle. And we can be pretty sure he's going to come very much conditioned and that his posing is going to be just perfect. We know that. And he's going to win the Mr. Olympia. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure. I think everybody knows that other guys are battling for a second. But again, what I'm trying to say is maybe, maybe. Don't be too surprised if the judges just change the direction and they go with somebody who is more classic. Who exactly would they replace these guys with? Would it be like, I don't know, Wesley Vissers, Logan Franklin, uh, maybe Ramon Dino type of guys or somebody completely else? I don't know, but yeah, if I was a batting man, I would definitely bet on Chris Bumstead. And yeah, he does look absolutely freaky right here. And here is Rafael Brandau. I mentioned him earlier. I compared him to Chris Bumstead. Uh, it's a good thing that he doesn't speak English. So if he watches this video, he won't be insulted that I compared him to a classy guy when I was talking about the size. Of course, he is bigger. And you can definitely see it here very clearly. Like, it looks like he grew. You know what? I mean, I, it looks like he had a good rebound from his previous show. Because, I don't know, those legs, man. Those legs look 
really dense right now, really round. I don't think his legs were this big before. And also, like, arms and shoulders and even chest. Now, of course, you can see he won't be nearly as big as the top guys, the very top guys. You know, guys like Nick Walker, Big Remy, William Bonek, uh, Brandon Curry, Hadi Chupan, uh, Hunter Labrada. No, no, he's not that massive, not just yet. But it looks like he grew a little. And he has amazing lines, amazing proportions, amazing symmetry, super small waist. And I think he's on the right track. As long as he doesn't ruin his aesthetics and if he grows, you know, big enough and if he manages to get conditioned, I believe this guy has a potential to be a top Olympian relatively soon, maybe a couple of years. What do you guys think? Where do you see this guy uh, in a couple of years? Do you think he has that kind of potential? Honestly, I love his physique. I'm amazed with his physique. And I think he's on the right path. I think he has been making significant amount of uh, consistent progress over the years. And if he keeps it at this pace, I think we can expect big things from Rafael Brando. Man, I love this physique, I gotta say. I love this open bodybuilding physique right here. On a complete opposite spectrum, we have uh, Charles Griffin. Like, this guy is everything that Rafael Brando isn't. He's short, he's blocky, he has big waist, he has a ton of muscle, and, you know, he doesn't have the greatest symmetry, balance, proportions, but he's a freak. He is a freak show for sure. And some people are having him in their conversation of him actually surprising us and potentially claiming one of the top spots at the Mr. Olympia. When I say top spots, I literally mean top 10. Like, top 10 in the world right now in Mr. Olympia is crazy. It's a crazy achievement. And some people are having this guy in their conversation. Now, I made a video about him. I mean, I, I mentioned him briefly, and I completely disagreed with this. With Matt Jensen, actually, his coach, claiming that he's not going to do a, as bad as most people expect, like that he's going to be one of the top guys. I, I didn't see that. I definitely don't see it even now, but I saw this new, fresh update. So I had to share it with you guys and to ask you your opinion. What do you guys think based on this, this most recent physique update, in which he looks crazy, like he looks shredded, he looks big, round, mature, like he has a lot of density, a lot of graininess, like this guy is a freak, but I don't like his structure, and that's enough for me to say that he won't be in the top 10. He truly has everything, pretty much, aside from that structure. When I say structure, I mean his waist is not very small. Yeah, he learned how to do a vacuum and he makes his waist seem smaller than it actually is. Great job with that, by the way, but you can still see that he is blocky. I don't like the lack of details in the inner part of his legs, even though he changed that too with adding more details to the inner thighs and also by changing his posing. Uh, other than that, like, uh, he's just blocky, he just has that kind of bone structure, and I think he's very much limited uh, as to what he can do at a Mr. Olympia stage, but maybe I'm completely wrong, if you guys think I'm wrong, tell me down below in the comment section, tell me what do you think, do you agree or do you disagree with me? Oh yeah, we got a physique update of Larry Wills, now in this post that he made, he says the difference between when he was taking this photo right here, he has been taking 170 mg of testosterone, and on this photo, which is right now, he is on 500 mg. So as you can see, the difference is rather large. He looks bigger, rounder, fuller, more vascular. And is that really, like, that's the question, is that really what he's taking? I mean, if you guys follow his channel a little, I think I mentioned this in my videos before, he stopped taking gear altogether at some point, I think he never comp went completely off, but, you know, TRT is pretty much the same thing, and uh, you know, 175 mix of testosterone, which is like maybe 100 mix of active substance, if that much, so that pretty much puts you in a you know, let's say maybe high natural level, so even though, yeah, he's not necessarily natural by the definition, his levels were pretty much normal, probably on the higher side of normal, but now, since he's taking 500 mix, that's a lot more than what you can produce naturally, like, you can't produce that much naturally, it's a lot, I mean, it's a lot compared to being natural, but it's nothing compared to what he used to use before, 
I don't think he ever really went into specifics, but from his uh, videos and when he talks about gear, I get the impression that he was like really crazy with that stuff. Like he was really blasting it uh, before. I mean, come on, he became one of the strongest people in the world while maintaining a lean and good-looking physique. So, of course, he was taking a ton of stuff. Of course, he has great, uh, like, 1%, less than 1%, 0.1% genetics. And he also uh, has crazy work ethics and all, and all that stuff. But without a lot of gear, he probably wouldn't accomplish what he did. And now, he looks like this. And do you guys believe that this is actually only 500 mix of test he's probably taking some gh too why wouldn't he at least like two units three units a day it's only going to make him healthier so why wouldn't he do that there is no reason he didn't want to specify that but i'm sure he's doing that pretty much and when you're doing that you're probably gonna have to use some kind of insulin maybe slow acting doesn't really matter but insulin is very anabolic especially in combination with uh, testosterone and gh it can create great results, so I'm pretty sure that's what's happening right here, he looks full, he looks round, he looks very lean, and he looks great, I gotta say, he looks awesome right now, earlier when he was completely off, I mean, when, when he was on TRT dose, he looked pretty much natural, now, however, it's a completely different story. Whatever you guys think about this, tell me down below in the comment section, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding stuff like this, guys, subscribe to this channel, thank you so much guys for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.